Hello everyone, welcome to another build video from me, Jebro, and I'm going to be doing the Power Ranger build for you today from the Ranger. We will be using the longbow, we will also be using, pardon me, the greatsword as well, and we'll be using uh, some different sigils, runes, and, you know, stuff. We have the sigil of air, and we have the sigil of fire on the longbow, creating some extra AoE damage, and also some nice uh, a lightning strike as well, low cooldown as well, which is also very, very nice, um, of three seconds, of course, and then another five seconds for the 50% uh, chance on critical to trigger a flame blast in the area of effect, so that will be 240 radius, which is very helpful and useful. Going over to the greatsword, we have some energy, which we need to gain endurance, so we can actually, you know, Dodge, which is very useful. <laughs> There's another reason for that as well. I'll show you in the traits in a bit. Sigil of Intelligence, next three attacks. While swapping to this weapon, while well, in combat, we'll have a 100% critical chance. So and that's on weapon swap, of course. So don't forget, it's not the same as the other sigils, which um, are on crit, of course, which is what we have a lot of having the Berserker's Amulet there. Rune of the Pirate. <coughs> Pardon me. I've tried to record this quite a few times, and I've just not, I'm not very well at the moment. I've got a bit of a cough, so you have to excuse me. Um, Rune of the Pyre, important. You do get an extra mic duration, which is nice. And also, you do get a 25% per chance, um, percent chance when struck to shunt Yar and grant free might stacks, which is very nice. And that all has, also happens to your allies, and the cooldown is 20 seconds. So low, um, which is pretty low and pretty nice, actually. And that kind of does uh, proc a lot, actually. It's quite nice. 50% chance to summon a parrot, and the cooldown is 60 seconds. The damage the parrot does is very sexy. It's good, and is worth having. I like this rune on this build, actually. It's having two pets doing a lot, a lot of damage, and the pets doing cripple, and also having the immobilize um, on my doggy, and also the uh, fear on the wolf as well is very nice. Uh, nice combination of skills, actually, between the pets, and also having the extra parrot damage is quite nice, in addition to my own damage. There's a lot of sustain in this build, as well as a lot of burst and crit. Going over to the traits, and we have 6 5 three zero zero. and that is the spread. And we will go through these traits in order, as you can see here. Cause vulnerability with your first strike when opening when entering combat. Combat now the opening strike uh, in this build appear doesn't only happen with me, but it also happens with my pet. So you can see my pet is there. I will open with a strike, and that will be five stacks of vulnerability. And when my pet hits as well, he will also gain some vulnerability as well. So we're going to go to this target here because obviously this guy needs to hit every single target. Um, so you can see ten stacks should pop up there. There we go. Ten stacks of vulnerability have just appeared. We'll go over to the next trait. Damage is increased while endurance is full. So my mo at the moment I'm doing my maximum damage with my abilities with my uh, with my longbow and my greatsword because my endurance is indeed full. So if you're on the edge of the point and you want to do a lot of damage from far, you want to make sure your endurance is full just for that extra 10% damage increase. Just something to be aware of in this build. It's quite nice. As I explained before, alpha training pets do have opening strike, which was described just here. So I, giving me an additional 10 uh, vulnerabilities, sorry, 5 vulnerabilities stacks, which is good. <coughs> Going over to the next trait, which is Eagle Eye, increases longbow and harpoon gun range. So obviously the range is increased on the longbow and also the damage. Kind of self-explanatory. Precise strike is opening strike always critical hits, which is always beautiful. So whenever I've got the uh, opening strike, which is from here, of course, and for my pet, my pet and me will definitely crit on the um, the first hit. So that's always very, very good. Read the wind. Lumbar and Harpu gun projectile velocity is increased. So the velocity that being increased is going to be good, especially for things like the knockback on the longbow. So it's e easier for me to get the hit and less obvious for them to get the dodge. And also for my stealth on the uh, third ability from the longbow. Very good. <coughs> also, the attack speed is, and that's what I mean with the attack speed being increased, less chance of them dodging such abilities. And also things like rapid fire, you know, it's... Uh, going to be pretty speedy ability so it's you can see you know a lot of damage there they've got to do one or two dodges to get rid of any of that damage obviously putting a block up will help as well any kind of reflect if you're going against this build a reflect is really nice against um a ranger because they could potentially kill themselves just with that actually to be honest um so going over to the next traits uh which is going to be in skirmishing 
we're going to go with Tailwind. So gain swiftness when swapping weapons in combat. So I'll just open up on this target golem here, switch weapons, and I will also gain the signet of, uh, sorry, the swiftness there, as you can see. And then I've gone into uh, Great Sword, which is going to give me my next three hits, going to critical hit. So that's pretty nice. Always good, especially if you want to leave a node when you're in the middle of a fight or if to decap off your, at the end of a fight, just hit the enemy while he's down, stay in combat, get weapon swapped up and get into swiftness and run away um, or run to another point or try and catch someone that's trying to leave a point as well. Very good, very useful skill. Uh, primal reflexes, so you gain vigor when you're struck by a critical hit. Nice, because you, you'll be higher on your endurance, which means you can do some more damage, and you can also do more dodging. That's, quite, again, quite an obvious thing. Going over to Furious Grip, gain fury when swapping weapons in combat. So not only are you gaining swiftness, you are gaining fury. So you want to swap your weapons quite a lot if you possibly can, so you can gain that extra fury, of course, which is always beneficial. And with both weapon sets, you can do a lot of damage. So... <coughs> things like Maul are really, really high damage um, abilities. If you can combo them up with things like Signet of the Wild, uh, Signet of the Hunt, and even Rampage's one, even even better, you know, because it's give, going to give you some extra fury and also some stability, which is quite nice. Going for... <coughs> pardon me. I'm going for Quick Draw, so reduce recharge on short bone longbow skills. Recharge is less, that's quite obvious. Hunter's Tactics, deal more damage while flanking. You deal more damage while flanking. Can't really explain that anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, natural Vigor, so increases endurance duration. So your, any kind of endurance you do get, it will be extended. So that um, so when you do get struck by a critical hit, that Vigor will be longer. It should be anyway. Incoming Disabling Conditions. Very good. Shared Anguish is nice. Um... Transfer to our pet, so that's very good, especially when, you know, for survival purposes, we don't have much survival in this build, and so Wilderness Survival is obviously extending that survival to a degree, and then when we go to the Companion's Defense, you and your pet gain protection when you dodge roll. So when you dodge roll, you will gain protection. Not there, because I'm not in combat. <laughs> We're going combat here. So we dodge there and get protection, as you can see. And then weapon swap. We've got a lot of boons in this build. We can we can use utilize by dodging and weapon swapping, which is very nice. You know, get some more protection there. And then when I can get another weapon swap, get some speed and also get some fury off onto the next target, which is really really good. So nice. So <coughs> when you swap targets, you can you can your uptime on your fury can actually be quite you know you could you can have it up fairly often which is very nice and also swiftness to try and catch targets that are running around and also to kind of ninja cap and whatnot so say this guy um was going down i could potentially you know um i could stealth myself i can just switch uh, to my other weapon and quickly get away um using different abilities as well obviously not the third ability to go back and attack you can if you want if make him think you run away but you know, you can get out of situations well using just your normal weapon skills as well, which is pretty nice, and changing weapons. So, very beneficial in this build. Wanted to quickly go through the heal and whatnot as well to just discuss this. Now, I was talking to Law about this build, and the main reason he he uses Troll uh, Unguent... Oh, I can't even say it properly. Unguent? Unguent? I don't know. You and your pet regenerate health over time. Now, of course, with the other heal we, we probably would use, the healing spring is very much on a point, and it removes conditions. Now, I want to be a little bit more mobile in this build, running in and out of points at different times. Um, <coughs> and having that healing spring means that we can't actually stand in it for too long if we do want to do that. So this is very good for on-the-move healing. Um, so you don't have to stand on the point. It doesn't have any condition removal, of course, so, which is a downside. So you could play with condition removal. We could he play with healing spring. It's really up to you. You have a signet of the wild, so it grants health regeneration to you and your pet. Very good, of course. And then the and the activate you and your pet grow larger, dealing more damage, and you also gain stability. So <coughs> you could potentially use this towards the end of a rotation or at the beginning. And if you think you're going to burst them down quickly, have that combo up. So stability is how many seconds? Eight seconds. Potentially you can burst someone down in eight seconds, depending on what they're wearing, if they're cloth or leather. Uh, classes or if they're quite bursty characters themselves you could burst them down quite quickly using that stability again then to actually perform the down which is very useful 
Signet of the Hunt, so give yourself some extra speed, which we do not have, other than uh, changing weapons in combat, and also the third um, ability on the Great Sword to get around is very nice. And on the Activate, we do, um, me and my pet do the next attack, and we do deal more damage, which is very nice. Of course, self-explanatory. Signet of Stone improves toughness for you and your pet as a passive on the activate so clicking it will give you and your pet no damage from attacks you and your pet are still as susceptible to conditions and control effects so no um, power damage or whatever it would just be literally any conditions that you have or any conditions that are afflicted onto us that will be used still you still can get feared and whatnot as well <coughs> so that I mainly use for survival of course or if I'm trouble when I'm trying to go for a down, and then use these two I'll use mainly for DPS, uh, if anything. Again, over to the elite. Now this is really now Mr. Law uses um, Entangle, which is very good, and, and not only does it apply a massive amount of immobilize and the, and the bleeding is good, but it roots them that your target down, so you can then focus them down with the longbow or the greatsword to get in that melee uh, range, so they can't really dodge much and. You know, you can do a lot of damage on them. I personally prefer to use Rampages 1 just because I'm going to get extra fury, extra stability, and the swiftness. The, swift, the stability is really good. Um, and not only is it for me, but it's for my pet as well. So my pet's going to get that. And, you know, it's... It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of damage. I, I really like having this ability. It's, it's good, you know, and so long as well. It's twenty seconds of fury, stability, and swiftness. It's it's really good. I'm just going to show you a little tiny combo here. Actually, see how much more I get. Six point five k. Look at the damage I'm doing just with uh, rampages one up. You know, it's a lot of damage, and that wasn't really merely really thinking about the abilities there in that rotation. So you can accidentally just do a lot of damage, even with Rampage as one up. Um, <coughs> now, I do warn you, people do not like Power Rangers. There's reasons for this because people don't think it's that skillful to play um, and whatnot. It's I have fun in it, and people do troll you a little when you do play it. But also to survive well, you do need to have some skill. You do need to be able to play the build well to survive because it feels like they can die very easily and there are different ways that you can actually do <coughs> get out of fights for what I have actually explained. I am going to do a gameplay video, which will be quite useful. Now the pets wise, we are going to use the, um, the dog here, Mr. Dog. And as you can see, he does um, an immobilize on the activate there. On the activated ability, sorry, and then then standard attack. So bite your foe, the cripple as well, and also the uh, knockdown, which is very good. And then going over to the wolf, we can see here as well similar attacks, but there is a fear. So always good. Fear is nice to get off. If we can get the fear off and then pull off my rotation, is very good. Especially if they haven't got a stunt like a breaker or anything to get out of that fear, and they can die very quickly. It's same again with the immobilized, and I can get up close range. And actually, hit off a lot of my great sword attacks as well. That's pretty much the build, guys. I am going to show you uh, some more combos and whatnot in the actual gameplay video because I'm. Um, I think feel that's going to be kind of better. You've seen some little mini rotations. I mean, one of the main rotations is uh, I don't know, probably it's very situational as well. But normally, I'll try and open with like a. Second ability on the longbow is, of course, getting instantly almost like 20 stacks of vulnerability, as you can see there. And then I'll go use my two signets and go into uh, more to do or some extra damage there. But as you can see, I over I did too much damage there, so probably not necessary to be honest. But obviously, there's a lot more survivability in people than a target golem, <coughs> and you're using two big cooldowns there. Actually, Signet of Hunt isn't a massive cooldown, to be honest, you know, it's only 30 seconds. That will be back before you know it. But there are a lot of different rotations, and also you can uh, do some nice uh, combo leap finishes with, of course, the Great Sword. And uh, using the Great Sword free to get around the map is very nice as well, as you can see. Um, it does cut down that distance quite fast. And also, Hit Bash is really nice. You can stun for one and a quarter seconds, which is good to get some more burst off in close range as well. And uh, the block is very useful for survivability, especially if you're trying to leave a point or if you're uh, on node and you know some AoE there, you can try and get use that ability to get out of the point as well. And obviously to avoid some burst damage yourself. So thank you very much. I hope you did enjoy this build. 
please mention below if I forgot anything or anything that would be useful. Like I said, I'm a little bit ill at the moment and <coughs> my concentration is a bit off. So apologies for that. I just wanted to get this build video out because it's been a while and people have been asking me to do a build video. And I just thought, you know, this is something new that people, have, well, not new, but since people have been playing since, especially the feature pack and uh, people... Um, <laughs> I can probably get a lot of stick for this, but hey-ho. Um, thank you very much, guys, and I will see you again very, very soon.